Father, forgive us that we are so full of pride. We boast about ourselves. We think highly of ourselves. We should abase ourselves into the dust, for we are sinful, full of sin and corruption. But thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ, who considered it not robbery to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation. That He came into this world, that he was weary and tired, and he had nowhere to lay his head. And he was taken by cruel hands and crucified and laid down his life on our behalf, the just for the unjust, the righteous for the unrighteous. Father, we ask and pray that you would teach us true humility, how we see how our pride ruins, um, ru ruins our testimony, Lord, and dishonors your name. Let us boast in nothing but the cross of Jesus Christ. Let us look to him alone. So, Father, we ask that you would make us holy, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and make us more like the Lord Jesus. And for his name and through his blood, we ask the forgiveness of all our sins. Father, we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Welcome to the Spurgeon's devotional podcast, a Christian podcast seeking to honour the Lord Jesus Christ, brought to you by David Makarath. This is the devotion for March the 17th. Pride goeth before destruction. Exodus 7, verses 1 to 5 and 10 to 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he sent the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth mine armies, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Spurgeon says, God's judgments hardened Pharaoh's heart, they are sure to harden if they do not soften. The monarch was of such a nature that terrors and plagues only made his spirit more unbending. Verse 10. And Moses and Aaron went in, in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Spurgeon says they had delivered their message. They here show their credentials. Verse 11, Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rods swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Spurgeon says he concluded that Moses was only a magician, like those in his own pay, and he therefore again defied the power of Jehovah. Verse 14, And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning, lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come, and the rod which was turned to a serpent thou shalt take in thine hand. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldst not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. Spurgeon says they had before defiled the river with the blood of innocence, and now it appears to them in blood-red colours as if it published aloud their murderous deeds. Verse 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. 
and the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Spurgeon comments, horrible, a crowd of horrors, their drink becomes blood. The river which they accounted sacred pours forth an intolerable stench. The delicious water grows worse than putrid, and the fish which were a great part of their food float dead upon the abominable stream. This was a plague indeed. Verse 22. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. Spurgeon says, Proud Pharaoh cares not. His magicians ingeniously imitate the miracle by slate of hand, and the heartless king cares nothing for the sufferings of his people. Lo, Moses scatters plagues of wrath, a ministry of fire and death, but our Emmanuel cometh forth with life and love in every breath. He turned their water into blood, for vengeance was his dread design, but thanks to God, our incarnate God, he turned our water into wine. Amen.